So now we're going to set the machine up for use in monopolar mode. To do that, connect the foot pedal to the port where the icon shows a diagram of a foot pedal. We'll connect that there. We need to install the handpiece. Now, as I said earlier, it comes with a single-use handpiece, but you also have an autoclavable multiple-use handpiece. So we'll connect the multiple one. As you see, you've got three pins on this connector, and they go into these three holes here. You can't get this wrong. It only goes in one way. Push that in place. And then we have the grounding plate. And that pushes into the only hole that's left, into there like that. We then have to connect the power supply to the back of the machine. And switch it on at the back also. Now, we'll go through a, a few self-checks before you can use it. So we'll just switch this on. Passes all the tests, and then you're ready to go. The handpiece comes already installed with a, a spatula tip, but there are several other styles as well. So you have a fine wire tip for making fine incisions. You have loop tips and ball tips, and there's also a hook. Now for this demonstration, I'm just going to use a, a piece of patient that I prepared earlier. And to use, we have to put our foot on the foot pedal. And if we're cutting, we press the yellow button. And if we're cauterizing only, we press the blue button. Pressing the yellow button will cut and cauterize at the same time. So that will help working in a, a bloodless field. So I'm going to put my foot on the foot pedal. The machine will make a noise. The noise is just a warning to say that you're about to cut. And you'll see the two dials here. And the light on the yellow dial is lit up, which means we're in cutting mode. And we have cut on this button here. So all I'm going to do is turn the power up a little bit. And we're going to start off quite low. Now, one of the questions we get asked is, what power setting do I use for what procedure? There, there, there isn't really any um, guidelines to that. The advice is to start low and turn the power up until you get the desired effect. So my foot on the foot pedal, my finger on the yellow button, and I'm just going to make a cut. And you can see that's that. If I wanted to turn it up, we can turn that all the way up. And you see that is a lot more power coming from that. But you also get more charring. So it's best to keep the power as low as you can get away with. As long as it gives you the desired effect. I'm just going to change the tip now. Uh, select one of the other ones. These are autoclavable, by the way. If you autoclave them all together in a bunch, once they come out of the, the sterilizer, you might find that they, they do get st stuck together a little bit, so you just need to separate them, but that's perfectly normal. To change the tips, we just pull one out, and for now, we're going to put a, a loop tip in here, which just pushes in. This is handy for biopsies or wart lump removals. Again, foot on the foot pedal, and this time you will see that we've taken a section of tissue away. Again, change the tip to one of the fine wires. Foot on the foot pedal, finger on the yellow button, and you get a much finer and now we're just going to have a look at some of the other functions so we've been using the cut mode but we can use the blend which blends cut and cautery at the same time and for that I'm going to change the tip I'm going to put a, a ball tip on 
handy for sealing fine bleeding vessels. Foot on the foot pedal, and if you notice, once we change the mode, this resets back to zero. So we have to turn the power back up again. And we're just going to start off around 20. Foot on the foot pedal, finger on the button, and there you'll see we're not actually making much of an impression, just a little bit. So we turn the power up and we go to say 40. Foot on the foot pedal and you see the difference. Now we're actually cauterizing and cutting at the same time. This time we're going to go to the next button here, which is forced. Now forced just allows you to uh, push the, the cauterizing um, energy a bit deeper. And because we've got a blue switch, we need to use the blue button and we need to put the power on here. So we're going to turn the power up to start off at 20, foot on the foot pedal, blue button, and you can hear, possibly hear the difference in tone is now forcing the current a little bit deeper. And the opposite to that is if we use soft for if we don't need a lot of penetration, again, we've reset to zero because we've changed the buttons. So we need to change this back up again. We're going to set again at 20 foot on the foot pedal. And hopefully you can hear that's a lot gentler. One of the questions we do uh, come across is where do we put the grounding plate on the patient? Now, the grounding plate should be positioned opposite the operative area as best as possible under the patient and it's it's a good idea if you can get it under a decent muscle mass because that's the the better tissue for conducting the power what we're doing with monopolar is we're sending the power from one of the tips of the instrument to the grounding plate through the tissue the grounding plate shouldn't be placed on anything metal direct on a metal table um, it should be placed on on a rubber mat uh, the reason for that is we need to concentrate the energy to this area rather than spread it over a wider surface or you just won't get the, the, the effect that you need. So if you remember just to put it under decent muscle mass, uh, not on a rubber mat. And the other question is, do I need to put any contact medium on the plate? Some people will put a smear of ultrasound gel on the plate, especially if they've got a really a patient with really thick hair. There's no need to clip, but a bit of gel on the plate will help with that conductivity. The one thing never to do with the plate is put water on because water can dry to a certain part of the plate and that's when you can actually sort of scald a patient. So gel's fine, water's not fine, plate on top of rubber mat, not directly onto a table and that's all you need to remember. So now we've looked at the, the monopolar setup, I'm going to reset the machine up for bipolar and we'll have a look at how we use the bipolar option. To use the machine in bipolar mode, there are a couple of accessories you need to order. One is the reusable or autoclavable bipolar cable and bipolar forceps. If you notice, the cable has this plastic connector on the end. Please don't try to remove this. It's meant to be there because that's used to switch the machine internally from monopolar mode to bipolar mode. Now this plugs into where you would normally put the grounding plate in and plugs in us like so and the forceps just there's no right or wrong way to put these in either way around will do and they just plug into the end of the cable so we, we have our bipolar cable in we're now going to reconnect our foot pedal and as you'll see the only button now that's lit up is the picture of the forceps you can't do anything with the other buttons because we can only use this in bipolar mode now so I'm going to start off with a power of 20, foot on the foot pedal, and I'm just going to see what effect that gives. And that's given effect, but possibly you want to turn the power up a little bit more. And this is good for sealing off small vessels. Now we just, as you see, we can just use this in bipolar mode. And because we don't need the grounding plate anymore, the tips of the 
bipolar forceps, forceps become a, a positive and a negative and transfer the current between them. And if we want to turn the power up past 40, you'll see that we can't. That's the maximum setting we can go to on bipolar. And there. That was and that is bipolar. So thank you very much for watching this brief video on electrosurgery. If you would like to uh, see the unit being used, we'd be quite happy to bring it along to practice and give you an on-site demo. Thank you once again.